Are we live? Google says we're live. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Juju Office Hours. What this is is our sort of bi-monthly uh, hangout. We just hop on online. We kind of do a little status of what everyone's working on. Um, we show you demos of things we're working on in the alphas and betas. Uh, it's very loose. We kind of encourage people to show up and just hang out. We could talk about things, answer questions. We'll answer your questions in IRC and whatnot. Uh, Real quick, I'll do some introductions. I'm George Castro. Antonio, why don't you go next? Yeah, I'm Antonio Rosales. I work over on the ecosystem team, working to build out some solutions. That's me. All right. Cheryl? Hey, guys. I am the Juju release manager. Um, I'm on the core team, and so I help us get our releases out the door and fix bugs and lots of good stuff like that. Awesome. Obviously the busiest person today. Marco, <laughs> go ahead. Hey, I'm Marco Cepi, uh, Juju Charmer on the Charm Community team. Rick? Hey, uh, Rick Harding with uh, Juju Engineering, and basically here to see all the fun stuff that we're going to talk about yes. today. And the least busy guy today. Just kidding. Uh, William, you're new here. This is your first time. Why don't you introduce yourself? Maybe tell us what you're using Juju for or something interesting about you. Sure. I'm, I'm William from the community. Uh, I actually work for LifeRay. Um, we are looking at a Juju on OpenStack on Juju on mass deployment. So just been kind of hanging out in IRC and, and getting a feel for it. And uh, glad to be here and, and hang out with you guys. Awesome. I remember back in the day we had a really horrible old, I think Marco wrote it, Life Ray Charm back in the day. I don't remember. I don't remember who wrote it. it. It wasn't horrible. It was actually pretty awesome. Was it you? <laughs> no, I didn't write it. Someone else wrote it, but it was cool. It worked. Uh, Precise, though. It was very old. Yeah, yeah. I'm really interested. I think it'd be really interesting to see a charm from that era re-implemented with layers and the new modern approach. And I mean, just measuring the lines of code, I think, would be very interesting. Um, so with that, we have we have an agenda of three things. Um, first, we're going to ask Rick to give us kind of an update of what's going on in Juju Core, and then as April's coming around, we are the Ominous Juju 2.0 is here, and Cheryl's team is working really hard on delivering that. She'll kind of give us a status on what things are. I think we're waiting for beta 3. Beta, is it beta yeah, 3? Beta three. Last time was beta 2. Sorry, it all gets kind of blurry. Um, so five, ten minutes each, just kind of give us a status. Tell us, tell us what's going on there, what we can look forward to. And then Marco's going to give us a demo of the new charm command, which landed yesterday-ish, two days landing. ago. Yes. Or in the process of being landed, wink, wink, maybe by the time you hear this. And this is a new command that comes as part of Charm Tools that kind of allows publishers to publish development uh, charms, publish stable charms to their customers and users. It gives you ACLs so you can say, hey, I only want these few people to test my private charms. And it, it kind of, in the past, you kind of had to file a bug and go through this entire process to get your charm in the charm store. And that was pretty terrible. So the new, new charm store is going to be more about self-service, about giving control of publishing of the charms to the people who write the charms instead of being gated on a whole bunch of slow people, us. So with that, uh, let's start with Juju Core first, though, Rick. Why don't you give us the... Um, well, I'll give, yeah, I'll give you guys the, the big picture. Obviously, we're all um, heads down looking at trying to get everything pulled together, and all the stories pulled together for the release of 1604 um, on April 22nd, I think is the correct day. Uh, and so as part of that, the charm command that Marco will talk about pulls together part of the, the charming publishing side of the story. Um, I think Cheryl's going to mention the actual latest beta coming along and what new things are in that and there's a few things still left to go. Um, I guess one particular thing I'll kind of call out as, a, as of interest is I know um, a lot of folks have been reaching out about using Juju on top of Maz 2.0, which is really awesome because the Maz 2.0 guys have done a lot of work this cycle, just as we've got a 2.0 and we're, you know, got a chance to reinvent some things and to, to make some big sweeping changes we've wanted to made for, make for a while. The Maz guys had has, are doing that with their 2.0. Um, of course, that means that all the code that Juju has it talks to Maz has to get updated, and because of the sweeping set of changes, it's not a small chunk of work. So um, I do want to kind of highlight. I sent an email to the list the other day about this that we are actively working on trying to get 2.0 support uh, into Juju 2 as fast as we can. Uh, but it is going to be one of those down to the wire um, towards the release kind of things. So 
be patient with us. Um, and it's going to be a really awesome story, GG 2.0 and all of its awesomeness on top of the Mass 2.0. We're just going to 2.0 all the things, man. Let's just uh, rev all those version numbers for 16.04. Awesome. It's looking pretty good. And we've had now an entire two weeks now to play with the LexD provider now that Juju's landed and everything. And I'm a very, very happy camper. Like, I mean, um, I mean that seriously. If you have a dedicated really fast drive and you can put your containers on there with ZFS, it's just... Yeah, there's been a lot of Those of you listening on the channel, go back one video to see <laughs> what we did because it was it was pretty awesome that we love that stuff. So great. So any 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 anything else other than that? Is there any other big pieces that need to land, or is it pretty much just here um, comes a runway? So, you're about I, you to. Know, yeah, I think well, it's as far as big pieces, big big pieces landing. I think the one thing that. Um, We've uh, we've got a really awesome model migration feature, which is going to be a beta feature at launch, um, just because of how big it is to fully be able to, to to lock down and migrate a running controller with all of its models running over here to another one over there. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's going to take a little bit more time to get that really solid, um, but we'll have it kind of in preview in a, as a beta feature. I think that's the only other like big like you know if you were to grab the beta three that's coming out shortly, like giant missing piece. Mm -hmm. um, the other stuff is there in some form or another as we, you know, flesh out the bugs and, and you know, get the, the little user experience things updated and all that. So right. And I'm just to be clear, me a liar, like wherever that's I'm model going. migration, right, not data. Just to be clear, Correct. Right? This, is the okay. Juju, this is the Juju data, right, your state data. Um, right. It's going to be one of the key ways users will be able to do upgrades very safely. You're running infrastructure running and you want to be able to, Migrate rather than upgrade in place and potentially get to a snag spot and have to figure out how do I go from here. Mm -hmm. It'll be much more of a side, you know, bring up a side one and migrate slowly over. And at any point, you'll be able to kind of abort out. Oops, that was an error or a message yep. I wasn't expecting. What so do they call that? Red, green, A, B, something like that. There's, I don't know. Like DevOps book is here somewhere. You oh, don't upgrade you in place. Yeah. You just deploy yeah. the new thing, test, switch yeah. over, back and yeah. forth. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so the, it's only the Juju stuff. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the model migration is uh, the commands for it are going to be behind a feature flag because it is still very bleeding edge alpha <laughs> right mm -hmm. now. Um, so it's I, I would yeah just sure might not want to do it in any sort of production <laughs> way yep. right now. And that term is blue green deployment by Martin Fowler in 2010. That's what I was thinking about. Um, gotcha. But with that, we could segue over to Cheryl. Um, now Cheryl will tell us all the. Now that Rick's told us things, you tell us what the reality is. <laughs> so, uh, as you had mentioned, we are all busily working on getting a beta 3 out the door right now. Um, so unfortunately, some, some of our packaging people are on vacation, so we're having to try and figure things out. Uh, so we're trying to, trying to get it out today for you guys to play with. There are a couple things to be aware of that are coming out. One of the biggest ones that people will notice right away is that now when you bootstrap a controller, you're going to automatically get two models generated. The first one is going to be your admin model, and the second one is going to be your default model. And you'll be switched into the default model when you bootstrap. I don't know if you guys have covered this before in the previous office hours. From, from we, we have shown it, and we've actually discussed, oh, I wish... What we do is we demo it, and then we deploy stuff, and it's like, oh, nuts. What I should have done is left an empty model as kind of my admin model. Okay. Because then when you want to clean up, now you have – it's kind of not clean. Yeah. You know, now I can yeah. just throw away that model. And yeah. So, yeah, we, you'll, you'll get switched into this default model uh, when right after the bootstrap. And so when you first run Juju status, you'll see it's completely empty. Mm -hmm. I've already had a couple people get confused about, where's my machine zero? And that's mm -hmm. now going to be in your admin model. Uh, so that's what you'll, you'll get when you bootstrap. One of the other really nice things that I think people are going to be excited about is that the LexD provider has been updated to automatically grab images now. So you don't have to sync images when you first do uh, – before you do a bootstrap. So that's been awesome. I've been playing with that, and that's been a lot of fun. Uh, one of the other things that's been nice is that we have enhanced the reporting of the status for machine provisioning status. So if you are deploying on a MAS, and for some reason your MAS deployment never completes, previously GG would just sit that, have that machine in pending forever rather than actually propagating that error up. But you'll actually see an error now, which is great. So that's... Uh, mm. Another good thing is going to be there. Um, there's also been a lot of work around getting credentials into Juju. I have not played with this personally, but other people have been playing with it, and they said it's a uh, much, much better experience. It's so awesome, yeah. Yeah, the, the add credential stuff will now um, be an interactive command. You can add things in there, and there's also 
um, an auto loading of credentials. So it'll try and discover credentials from your environment. Um, another important thing to note, particularly for those using, oh, just only for those using Joyent, um, we are no longer using the Manta storage. So if you have any Manta keys uh, in your credentials file, you'll see an error when you try and bootstrap, you just need to delete them. Previously, they had been ignored, but for some reason they were required. But if you see an error when you're trying to bootstrap on Joyent, just remove those Manta uh, pieces from your credentials. And I think those are the big things that are coming up in uh, in beta three. Yeah, and you you guys actually fixed somebody fixed a bug that we ran into the last time we were hanging out, where we're doing a large deployment and it's status. The relationships, there's a whole bunch of duplicates over and over again. Yes. And we mm -hmm. filed it, and someone just fixed it. It was like, hey, I just happened to be in the file. It was a one line yep. fix. That's so Horatio. Thanks so you for can that. Dig in. Yes. <laughs> So just a reminder to everybody out there, file those bugs, even if you feel there's no hope. Yes, I watch know. them. And especially if it's something I personally hit a lot, I try and get it fixed. My my hot button right now is uh, the bootstrap series flag on bootstrap doesn't work properly. So just be aware that you might hit that. Uh, you, if you specify a uh, bootstrap series is different than your default series, you might fail, see a failure with no matching tools. In which mm -hmm. case, just use the default series uh, config. And, and then you can change it. Do we still need to upload tools each time with this one? You will for for Lexty um, if you're okay. if you're using a trusty controller, and it's because we are still building our trusty tools with Go One Two. Um, but okay. I just saw what was it yesterday that Michael Hudson Doyle is getting Go One Six into trusty updates, and once that's there, we are going to do the switch over in our builders to build our Juju tools with Go One Six, which means that you would not have to do an upload tools for the trusty controller. So is that on? Is that on track for at least 2.0, or do we know when? Yeah, it's, a, it's in proposed right now, so everything's just in proposed for a little bit to make sure it doesn't cause any problems. Mm. Um, so we'll, we're in the proposed window right now, so if that goes well, I would expect within a week that that would try to hit the updates, and then after mm. that we would follow up with our updated builds using 1.6. So like potentially a beta 4, or will we be doing a retroactive beta 3 build for the agents? Uh, no, I, I think it would be a, we would roll with it with a, probably a beta 4, just as yeah. awesome. we, have, we have enough stuff to keep ourselves busy for now. <laughs> So, come on, Marco. Work with me. Right, figure that out. <laughs> like, get Rick on the show. Make him pay. Um, oh, I do and want one to of mention... the other things. Oh, go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. Um, create model. Previously, you had to specify a credentials file, and now that will by oh, default use this yes. inherent same credentials from the admin controller. That was the biggest annoyance I've had. Yes. The paper cut. So that's <laughs> that that's another sharpest. improvement for beta three. Yeah, and in particular, you can still pass alternate credentials if you do want to try to, you know, mm -hmm. build stuff to home and away or whatever, but out of the box, it doesn't do that. Um, and I want to call back out the add credential just because the change there is it was in the last beta, beta 2, but it only accepted a file that was your credentials file. And when we when we say, like, it's more interactive or whatnot, it's it's a flat out, every use Juju Quick Start where you would say pick your cloud and then it would ask you for the fields of data that it needed to be able to talk to that cloud you don't you don't need any file creation anymore. So this is this is kind of the last step of you shouldn't have to touch any files to use Juju anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you can add the cloud in, from the command line. You can add the credential from the command line. It comes with all the clouds ready to go, um, and so you should be able to just you know add credentials, pick a cloud, and bootstrap and go. So awesome. Okay, and with that, I have some incoming questions from um, from James Beatty. Uh, although they appear to be OpenStack specific, but I'll run them by you, Rick, and if you can't answer them, then I'll go get Beesner. Okay. Um, Nova Lex D instances plus Cinder volumes? Question mark. Uh, Horrible question. question no, I mean, I, I know the Nova Lex D support's going in. I don't know specifically whether those... I, I guess what are you looking for out of this? Are you running them on Cinder, or do you want them to... Yeah, we're gonna need clarification. Right. I think I think I think I understand the question. Will we be having Cinder volumes mapped to Novalex D? This sounds like a strictly OpenStack Charms question, though. I don't think it's anything particular to Juju in this question. Mm. We don't have any OpenStack Charmers on here, so you should just go bug. It's, it's, yeah, I was gonna say it, it. It actually starts to sound like like a Juju storage feature where you could pick the storage for something that you would deploy. Um, and I yeah, I think like Antonio says here in the chat. You know, at, at Juju storage support on top of LexD is probably something that we're going to come, you know, come back awesome. to. But you know what Chuck Shirt told me over IRC today is What's he that? sort of mostly has live migration of Nova LexD working. That makes you feel uh -huh. any better. 
Um, yep. He has more questions. OpenStack plus network spaces, question mark. Uh, that is not going to make 2.0. That is at the top of the roadmap for the next cycle, um, okay. which we'll be talking about um, in May where we have our sprint to go through the roadmap for the next six months. So um, I would definitely expect to see it uh, at the top of that list. Mm-hmm. Git Launchpad development stunts community engagement and community in action. Can we have these repos mirrored on github.com slash juju solutions? So what we did... Git, well, hold on. What Git Launchpad repos are we talking about? I think he's talking about when we move the charms over to the upstream OpenStack. Open oh, those, are all, those are all in Garrett, though. Those are all like Git, Git upstream. I don't think they take yeah. merge requests against the Git Launchpad ones. But yeah, I, I'll, I'll follow up with James on that one see exactly what he wants. Uh, models, controllers, clouds, how well does this model fit on top of public, private, slash open stack? So um, if you have a public or a private open stack, it's all the open stack provider that Juju knows how to talk to, right? It's about configuration. And so what you would need to do is there's two pieces you would need. You have to add the cloud. So if you had a private open stack, for instance, you would run add cloud and tell it where the API endpoints that that open stack is located at so that there's okay. a cloud there that you could bootstrap to, right? Mm. The next thing you have to do is add your credentials for that cloud, right? So it maps just like any other kind of cloud we have, um, whether it be a public or a private open stack. You have to tell Juju how to talk to it and then how your account works to talk to that cloud, and then you should be at a Juju bootstrap, pick the proper cloud. Um, if it's got regions, you could slash the regions and such. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it works just like you would expect it to. And I think I'll volunteer for this next office hours because I have an orange box here and I should put it to good use. Mm. I will set up an open stack and use Juju2 to create the credentials for clouds and stuff and show how that looks. Yeah, you know, I think it will be great out. when we do that as well is kind of give people an example of mm. what it looks like when you have, let's say I have a, my own private open stack. Yep. Like, for me specifically, I like to know, okay, like, you know, when you create the controller, ask for cloud name and then do I want to name this mm. prot? Like, kind of give people like a basic workflow, right? So it's like, if I have hybrid, like how, what kind of naming conventions make sense? You know, that that kind of sort well, of thing, and then put that as the examples instead of yeah. name your cloud, dollar sign, right. you know? That, yeah. No, and I will say some folks were definitely have struggled a little bit with the idea that a lot of things get prefixed with local colon when they add, um, add their own clouds and things. So I want to kind of call that out ahead of time because it's really about the new multi-userness that Juju has in 2.0. Right, so it's very it's great that you can add a cloud that you call you know Rick's home, um, and you know give it a good name and all that. However, people can share their clouds with you, right? They can give you access to their bootstrap controllers and things, right? Mm-hmm. And so it, when that happens, the local colon's there to help tell my Rick's awesome from someone else's Rick's awesome, because I'm sure everyone has bootstrapped at some point in time with Rick's awesome as the name of the right, right, controller, right. right? So you know, so when we both do that, we need a way to be able to communicate. So, so it's a global colon, namespace, is what you're it, saying. It, yeah, it definitely helps yeah. that. So it's automatically appended, and for when you first get started, it looks odd. You're like. Why would you do that? There's yeah, no need to. Because there's 50 clouds named test. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So we're, we're trying to plan ahead a little bit there. Uh, so just watch out for that if that gets too confusing. Um, okay, awesome. And that gives us a great a great subject, I think, for the next subsequent one. So we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, um, I think we'll do an OpenStack cloud, and we'll do – I'll share – we'll do some bootstraps and sharing of credentials back and forth between George and I or someone. Yeah, yeah. So with that, uh, he has some other questions. Before I get to those, though, Cheryl, do you have any other other bits? I know you want to get back. Get back to that no. release. Get back yeah. to that release. <laughs> you guys have something new to play with. Yeah, I don't have anything else, but I'll, I'll stick around for these questions if anything applies to me. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out anyway. That's really great. We should have you more often when it's not so critical every five minutes. Um, okay, next one. I have a quick question for Cheryl before we end there. Sure, sure. Um, Cheryl, you, you provided some good guidance, and thank you for all, always having good answers to my questions in Pound Juju. Um, as far as still controllers, is that something that we would see a little bit better in Beta 3, or is there recommended ways if we do get stuck to be able to get unstuck? Or how, how would you like to see us so, operate that in Beta 3? So there, you're not going to see... Um, well, there has been improvements in terms of when things are cleaned up out of your controllers and your models, cache.yaml file. Um, for some kill controller failures. I've, I've been seeing that. Um, you still may get into a situation where you have a record in your controllers or your models um, that doesn't actually correspond to anything. It's still alive. Uh, one of the things that we want to do is provide a way 
through a command to allow users to clean up stale information for con from controllers, either because it's something that they've deleted and it's still sticking around there, or because whoever shared a controller with them has now removed that controller and so it doesn't exist anymore. And that's one of the things we're going to look at for beta 4. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Awesome. Good question. Uh, there's a few more questions that came in from uh, James Beatty. Um, and these are particularly for the OpenStack charmers, and these are, I'm going to read them out anyway, just for, they're on the record, but I don't think that we have answers for these unless we can drag an OpenStack charmer in here a little bit. Uh, so the first one is Ceph Radis Gateway Charm. There's a non existent auth endpoint. Uh, for the same charm, there's also a default code of 30 gigs that you cannot modify. These are problematic. And there's also a link to a bug on Keystone. Um, I'm not sure about answers for these. Sorry, James. Uh, we usually have an OpenStack charm on here, but I can't seem to scrounge one up, probably because it's holiday for a lot of people. Yeah, I think a lot of them are, are in Europe, and Europe's off today and Monday for Easter holiday and such, so it's uh, not the best day to ask them questions for sure. But I will make sure that we follow up with them. Um, and actually, James, if you'd like, you could just email the Juju list on these these last three questions, which I think are are good. Get some get some uh, more eyes on them. We got some patient work in stuff, some stuff. So, oh, maybe that was addressed there in the next release of the charm. So I know that Antonio, the OpenStack charms have a release coming up at the end of April, right? Yep, 1604, and then 1607, then 1610. Okay, so cool. There's some changes coming up there, but we can we can be able to get with some folks who do some common development there. Chris will come, and uh, Chris McNaughton can be able so to have exactly stuff, yeah. those changes out there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And remember, when you're explaining the new charm stuff, explain channels, because that will directly affect the OpenStack charmer stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm going to explain in a minute. All right. And with that, we can move on to Marco's demo. <laughs> what a great segue, George. <laughs> so I'm going to... Segue, if anything. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen for a second. Um... Okay, show us what you got. Now... I had thought about explaining how the Charm Store works now, but then I realized that's really embarrassing <laughs> and horrible. So we're just going to pretend it's always been like this yeah. and just start from scratch. So Marco will... Well, perfect. Good split. Looks good over here. All right, so Take is the font size okay for everyone? Can everyone see everything all right? I'm going to take so, no answer. As a, yeah, as it looks a good okay answer. here. I'm... Yep, you're fine. Cool. So I just recently wrote a charm from scratch using layers. Um, for anyone who's ever been to uh, to this website, um, it's basically the the for people who don't have bundles in the store, the ability to render bundles like you would see in the store. So it's just a remote loader. We use this a lot in cabs for the benchmarking stuff. So if you benchmark a bundle, we can actually show you the drawing for that bundle. Uh, so I recently had to charm this one up, and I figured I'd walk through what the process looks like now from going to start to finish. So the first thing is, is um, there is a new charm command. This charm command uh, is quite special because it's a split from the previous charm tools. So for a long time, we've had the charm namespace and charm tools, and we've just been kind of doing a bunch of ad hoc development, just a strictly charm development focused stuff. Um, the UI engine, Juju UI engineering team has come and created a uh, a whole bunch of new commands for the charm namespace that make it really awesome for anyone that's doing any sorts of charm development or looking to get into charm development. Um, and this is a whole new way to interact with the charm store. So if anyone's ever had to push a bizarre branch and has wondered why it takes four hours for it to show up in the charm store, all this kind of goes away with the next release, this charm tools, charm 2.0 um, kind of name. So um, it's in kind of release candidate testing right now, so you'll have to add two PPAs to get it. First, you'll need PPA Juju Stable, um, and then you'll want Juju PPA uh, Devel. Uh, these, two, these two PPAs combined on your machine will have the, will get you the charm command, so you can just app get install charm, um, and then charm gives you a whole bunch of options now. Some of these may seem familiar, uh, things like charm build, charm create, uh, charm proof, charm test, uh, these are kind of commands that were carried over from the previous charm tools, but there are a whole suite of new charm commands in here, um, including things like charm push and pull, which is what I'm mostly going to be going over today. Pull uh, and push is right here as well. Um, so with these commands, this gives it so that you can really easily, and stuff that we've been hinting at and talking about for a while now, just push stuff to the charm store and make it almost instantly available. Um, 
So for that, I'm going to kind of demonstrate the, what the workflow would look like. Uh, first off, I want to make a call out that uh, there's been lots of work on Charm tools to make it layers and 2.0 ready. Uh, so by default, when you Charm create something, um, it will create you a layer instead of a Charm boilerplate. So if you go into Hello World, um, this is actually a layer boilerplate instead of the previous boilerplate, which was the Charm boilerplate. So this is us getting ready for a 2.0 world. Um, and, a, and a charm build, charm reactive world. So in here we've got kind of the hello world of writing your first charm layer. Um, so that's something that's come out in charm tools recently. So you can still use charm create. Uh, we still have all the previous templates. So if you're looking to switch up, um, we have reactive Python and reactive bash. These are the bash and Python equivalents of the new reactive charming pattern. But also the previous Python, Ansible, Chef, Python Basic, PowerShell, and bash templates if you want to use the previous, more classic style of charming. Um, both of those are still acceptable forms, so we highly recommend the new reactive pattern. Uh, so I went ahead and did that a little while ago. I created a charm SVG layer. Um, a couple things with this one. First of all, why are these here? Um, for some reason, I got a bunch of depth directories. Hold on a second. Uh, OK. Uh, so this is a, just a reactive layer. Um, it's a Charm SVG layer. It builds off of the basic app uWSGI and Nginx layer. It provides this web interface for generating bundles. Um, something else I wanted to bring up is it's also, uh, it also uses resources. Um, so in the metadata now, I've defined not only the resources it consumes, in this case it's a binary for building the SVG, from the Juju SVG library, as well as the very simple web app. Uh, it's also a multi-series charm. This will work on Trusty and Xenial. Uh, so these are a couple of new features that are coming out in the 2.0 beta. Um, very soon I'll have to be slapping a min Juju version on here uh, because this only really works with 2.0. Um, so a couple of things that we've done with the charm build process is first, let me just do this. Um, you charm build, you'll likely be getting these errors coming up soon. Um, this is in order to enable a key feature um, that I'll show off in a second. So let me go ahead and add a repo here to the layer. Um, basically, it's saying that you should identify where the upstream of these layers live. Let me go into... Uh, layer.yaml and add this. Okay, I'm going to do another charm build so we get that. That warning will go away now. Um, and so I've got my latest build of my charm SVG. Um, so presumably I've deployed it, or maybe I haven't deployed it yet, but I want to start publishing it so that people can, I can start sharing it with everyone. Um, so the first thing you'll want to do is uh, make sure you're logged into the charm command. So one of the commands that charm has is charm who am I and charm login. So I'm going to do charm login. Uh, it's going to prompt me to log in. This is going to be logging into the... Uh, I've already logged in, so it's not going to ask me to log in again. Um, oh, never mind. Let me go into this container I prepared for just this scenario. For those of you wondering, in, in LexD containers, if you don't explicitly mention a name, it auto-generates one. That's why. So the, yeah, this is a container that I've just run. I've already added the stable and develop PPA. I just app get installed charm, so it's going to run through and get me that charm command and all of its crazy depths. Um, and this is a trusty machine, but this will work on Xenial, Trusty, uh, Wiley, uh, the ones who are supporting off the bat. Um, so we're in the process of getting this into the Xenial archive. So in the future, for everyone running Xenial forward, you'll just app get install charm, uh, and magic will happen for those. Previous releases, we'll be working to see if we can't get into the trusty, but we'll be providing a stable PPA to continue that trend. Um, so this took a little longer than I thought it was going to take, but this should take just another hot second to unpack, and we'll log in. Uh, just to show you what the login looks like, um, I have two-factor auth enabled on my account. Uh, a lot of people do, so this is something also to be aware of. Um, but if you don't, uh, there's ways to get around that as well. 
I'm impatient. All right, cool. So I've got a charm command again. Uh, charm uh, login. It'll prompt you for your username. Um, this trip you up a little bit. It's your Ubuntu SSO username, which is going to be probably your email address. In my case, it's this. Um, your password, and then your two-factor code. So if that works, you should be able to type, who am I? Um, and depending on your, your account, you'll either have very little or a lot show up, uh, like I do. I happen to be a member of a lot of groups um, in the Ubuntu SSO, so those will all show up here. And it's important to note these groups because these are all memberships that I can actually push to Charm Spaces. So I'm going to show that in a second. So by default, this is who I am, Marco Ceppi. Uh, pretty straightforward, but I'm also a member of the Charmers group, and as a result of that, I've been in a lot of other groups as well. Uh, so I, that's how you log in. That's how you check who you are. Um, back out into here. I'm still logged in here, I think. Okay, cool. So I'm going to push this up. So all i got to do is charm push, uh, and I'm going to push this charm here, charm SVG, um, but not that. That's the layer. I want to go to the build output. So here's the build output. It looks more like a charm. Uh, so charm push this to... And I can push it to things like Marco Ceppi, um, but for this I'm going to actually push it to Juju Demo, uh, which is a group that I'm a part of. If you look at charm... Uh, who am I? One of the many pieces of information out here is the Juju Demo group. Um, so I'm just going to charm push Juju Demo trusty charm SVG. That's what I want to call it in the charm store. Um, I type that, and this is the the waiting part. You're in a lot of groups. I am. <laughs> so some of them are <laughs> slightly more interesting. <laughs> All right, there we go. So that's how long it takes to get a charm into the charm store. Um, we're down to like seconds, and, I, and I'm probably hitting my upstream limits of both sharing on Google's Hangouts and stuff, but that's essentially it. So if I look now... Um, you nope. would think, oh, nope. I, I, I know, I know, I'm okay. getting there, man. All oh, right. yeah. All right. I, I know. So you would think, I was about to say, you would think this is done. So you should be able to go to something like slash u slash juju demo, see a charm there, but there's nothing here. So if I logged into the storefront, I'd see it, and that's because there's a couple things that Charm Publish introduces. The first is ACLs, and that's what George was alluding to earlier, is that each item, by default, will only be readable and writable by the group that it's pushed to. So only anyone in the Juju demo group should be able to see that. But also, there's a new introduction of channels into the Charm store. So by default, whenever you push, it actually becomes like a an unhinged Unpublished. revision. It's just sitting there in the ether waiting to be associated somewhere. So because I haven't published it anywhere, um, it's just it's not actually tied to anything. It, it's there, but not quite... Um, this is just the ability for you to start pushing up revisions. But what I could do is I could associate a revision with a channel. So, for instance, I could say charm um, publish. And I want to publish. Oh, tab completion is going to screw me up until that lands. Um, and I want to publish this revision here, which is what it spat back out to me. It said, this is revision zero of the charm to channel development. Uh, so what that says now is now this charm revision lives in that development channel. So if I do a charm, was it charm? Not charm info. Charm no, show. It, it doesn't show. I filed a bug on this yesterday. Actually, um, there's not a good way of tracking and seeing that that development channel is true. What what ha what you could do right now that you couldn't do a minute ago, you could juju deploy this charm and say, give me the dash dash channel equals development. And it would go find the latest published development channel revision, and it would use that charm to deploy. Oh, I see. Last time I did this, I did it after I pushed. So let me just... I'm going to assume that this is good. I'm just going to go ahead and push it to... Uh, not stable. What's the, what's the other channels? Development and... Uh, 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 public. Or not public. Stable. Let's, let's ask the help... Output. Stable channel. The <laughs> stable channel. 
<laughs> that's not a good sign that we had to, it wasn't that obvious. Um, All right, so now that I push the table channel, if I do show, I'll get information back about it. Um, this is where the actals come into play. So this is a whole bunch of output, but the important things that I want to show is that um, it lists that I had resources attached to it. Um, to pick that up. It also shows me download information, which isn't very impressive right now, but I hope that the future that number grows a little bit. It also shows me the channel information, which I think is still in, in progress of being able to show development stuff, so it's both development and stable version. Uh, but the important thing I want to show is the permissions. Right now, only people in the Juju demo group can read and write to it, uh, which is problematic because if I go to my landing page, I want to share this with someone outside of the Juju demo group. No one can see it here because I'm not logged in. Now, if I logged into the into the Juju Charms UI here, um, I'll see the charm show up because I'm in the Juju demo group, but that's not what I want to do. I want to be able to share it with people. So if I want to share it with a specific person, all I would have to do is charm grant um, Juju demo trusty charm SVG, and I could grant it to um, read access. Can you test something for me? Take the trusty out of that. I don't think you need the trusty, but... Um, He's saving everything. Save, save you a little bit of typing, I think. And George, that's your launchpad user ID, right, George? Yes. So what I've just done is I've given George read access to here. If I was smart, I would have had him log into the charm store so he can see it. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a problem. Uh, I, oh, man, I goofed this one up again. Oh, no. Did you just oh, remove your own access? Yeah, no. I did. I didn't. I said it to him. I didn't add myself to it. You did this last time. I know. Well, Chuck did this last time, but they fixed it, so it's not a problem anymore. Right. I right. They made it so that I could write to the object, but not read the object. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I could. I reset the permission, so instead of it now just being George, it's now everyone again. Um, there's a way to do. Let's let's look at the real quickly. Marco reads the instructions one more time. Let's look at the brand. <laughs> um. Ah, set. I'm using set really wrong. So you should never really use set. Um, right. If I just ran this with George, it would be everyone and George specifically. Right. You're granting access to George. Set right. Before is, I was set, just set, like, set is for changing. Still everyone, but only <laughs> these people. Right. We, <laughs> we need, like, serious ACL training. This is, like, the second time this has happened. Well, it's, it's, it's new, but it's one of those, um, right. if, you, if you didn't have set, what would happen is you would have a, a charm with ten people in it, and when, if you wanted to revoke all those, you'd have to run ten different revoke command kind of things to do it. So set is, like, forget what's there and make mm -hmm. it this, right? Right. And I like that. I, I'm all good with that. Yeah. So, Just, uh, we, we have see, a, we not have me, a I'm different. Yeah. I, I prefer, like, an append... Yeah, so it'll depend by default. Using the set flag was wrong on my part. Right. Um, but now you see George and everyone. So if I were to remove everyone, George would still have read access to this. Um, and just so that I, I don't screw myself out of this again, I'm going to add you to demo back. Um, okay. <laughs> so, But the important thing is if I refresh the web page now, if anyone goes to this web page, the charm will show up because everyone has access to read this now. So here it is. It's published. It's Juju Deployable. If you Juju Deploy, Juju Demo slash Charm SVG. Um, all the pieces are here, so I, I was able to publish that pretty quickly to the store, and the iterative process follows the same kind of wave. Um, I can run charm build again or make modifications. I can charm push the development channel and iterate in the development channel, um, and then when I'm ready and when people have tested it, we can move that reference to the stable channel, uh, and then everyone else will get that goodness. So it really helps streamline a lot of processes that I know people have been doing by creating a development user group altogether or trying to use branches directly in bundles for deploying and testing. This kind of crystallizes that, makes it really nice and easy to manage, um, despite me still struggling with some of the commands. Yeah, uh, I think that what I, you know what we really try to focus on is as soon as it's as soon as it's pushed, there's a revision assigned to it, and a bot or anyone could you know who has access could go and grab that revision and run CI tests automatically and such on it, right? And then if those tests were to pass, this is set up such that you could have a bot go in and then publish the the revision that just passed the tests into the development channel. 
which maybe it would sit in kind of like a, a, a you know the Ubuntu archive proposed where it might sit for a little bit make sure it was good and that you know that people had a chance to try it or whatnot before then you would go from the development channel into the stable channel at that point anyone who has that charm deployed would see it as an available upgrade when they run juju status or if they were to run juju upgrade charm they would get only the things in that stable channel right so it kind of lets us have you know all the workflow you could want with CI infrastructure test groups that try things out manually and do some manual QA up to what actually gets sent out to the end users who are running this stuff in production and are obviously sensitive to not wanting to accidentally test out something that uh, wasn't ready yet. Absolutely. Um, so last couple of things that I want to go over are uh, the ability to set additional information about a charm. Uh, so one thing that we have here is the ability to set where the bug URL and where the home page is for this charm. So I can do something like Charm sets um, juju demo charm SVG uh, set the home page equal to and the bugs URL equal to GitHub um, slash Uh, so those will be set, and those will be surfaced in the store as well. Um, and you, so can, that's the, you can charm show those, right? So charm show bugs URL, for instance, right? I think you need the charm name first, and then the... Yeah, cool. How, how instant does the stuff show up as soon as he runs this command, Rick? Is it literally, I, then I switch to my browser and hit F5, or is there... Yeah, no, it is. I know it's, in the past it was like, ingest No, no. Yeah, well, because... Right. So it, here they are. So, George, they're here right now on the home page. Okay. There, there's the home page, which will link to svg.tudu.solutions. Wonderful. And then here is the submit a bug, which will go to my GitHub page. Oh, I, well, I, I fat the, the URL. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Well, that, so that's interesting that that happened, right? Because we are kind of taking ourselves out of the equation, right? Right. Before we would go through this whole kind of rigmarole and, you know, it's like you had to wait. Now it's like, you know what, we're going to step out of the way, give you the tools to self-publish your stuff, right? And then... It's, it's very key that, that develop, different developers working on different charms feel at home with the tools they use. Um, you know, some folks will be on, on GitHub this, some will be on their, you know, private Garrett, you know, the OpenStack Garrett instance stuff that, um, others will be in Launchpad with their BZR, you know. So we very much are focused on letting you do your development the way you do it in your community and make it as simple and smooth as possible to have a good workflow getting those charms into the store. Um, and, you know, less hurdles of I don't want to put my charm in the store because... I don't want this or I don't want that or I would have to do this and that, you know what I mean? So hopefully um, this will remove most of the hurdles folks mm -hmm. have with working with the store, be it a time issue, a tooling issue, or just a workflow issue, you know? Exactly. Um, and so I just, while you guys were talking, I went and fixed those links and they're already live. So the fact that you can respond, it, it feels much better. I know I know why we had, why we've been doing it the way we've been doing it for so long and when we first started it made a lot of sense and worked really well for us but did not operate very well at scale, this idea of constantly polling to bring in, uh, to bring in data. So this, this more push model, this more instant interaction feels much better, and it's something that I, as a charm author, really enjoy. Um, uh -huh. So there's a couple more commands I wanted to go over. Um, the new charm command also supports the ability to push terms and push resources to the store. Uh, some of those bits haven't quite landed on the server side yet, so the commands exist but don't do anything just yet. Um, most of the charm tools commands are there, but as a new one I want to highlight real quickly, um, one that comes with some bits of contention. So the first thing is, is you can download charms. Uh, this is great. If you're looking to do an offline deployment, you can charm pull any charm from the store. For instance, I could just charm pull WordPress, uh, and that will download WordPress uh, here in my directory. Um, and I've got WordPress as I would be deploying it out to the store. Um, some important things, so this strips out things like DCS information and stuff. It's just charm store version of WordPress 4 archived locally. Um, so if you wanted to, you could do something like uh, juju deploy dot slash WordPress. Uh, and that will just work with juju 2.0. It makes it really nice if you wanted to 
you have a DMZ problem where you can't reach out to the store and stuff, you can download them on a laptop and bring them into the network or on a jump drive, um, and that way you don't have to go and fetch where they come from upstream, and maybe upstream is a layer that gets built every once in a while that's not anywhere you can get from an archive perspective. Western, Marco. Yeah. Where's the VCS information when you do this? There is no VCS information. Ha <laughs> ha. That was a leading question. I. <laughs> 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 Thanks, George. I really appreciate it. That, it, it. And Charm Pull is awesome. It's it's a great way to quickly get what's in the Charm store and pull it down. Especially right. you want to start hacking on things. How how did they solve this problem in this Charm? You could just pull it down if you don't like poking at yep, the this web. This is Charm W Get, man. Yep. Yeah, essentially yes. Charm W Get of Payload. Um, something else that we added was a pull source command. Um, this one's a bit interesting and has different code paths depending on what you run it with. Um, so pull source will essentially pull the source for whatever you feed it, and this could be a charm. In the event the charm is just a normal classic charm, it does whatever charm pull does. It downloads that archive, essentially. Um, in the case of things like uh, a, a charm that's written with layers, it will find the uh, topmost layer that charm was built with and download the layer instead. Um, and then you could also download explicitly just the layered interfaces directly. So this is a bit of a uh, attempt to bridge the charm store with the interface and layer stuff that we've been working on. Uh, so this is the first pass at this. So the idea is if I charm pull charm SVG, well, juju demo charm SVG, I will get what I upload to the store, which is that giant uh, built charm artifact. Um, so here it is in its full glory. Uh, it is amazing. But if I wanted to get the layer for this, uh, let me just go here. I could do charm pull source um, juju demo charm SVG. Uh, and what this will do is it will actually clone... Oh. <laughs> I have to not have the charm SVG already downloaded. Uh, it'll actually go and download the Charm SVG layer. Uh, so now I have the layer itself, uh, and it actually pulls it with the, the VCS information in place. Uh, this isn't 100% ideal, obviously, because it remotes. It's a it's the remote that is the upstream remote, and not a, a way. To, and I think be forked or anything like that. But um, it'll download its VCS. So if it's got a Mercurial address or a bazaar or a Git repo, it'll pull down that as best as it can. And it tries to get you the topmost layer that actually built that charm, which is the more interesting thing from a source perspective and the actual built artifact. Yeah. Uh, and and the, old, the old way we had to, you had to Google for that exact charm name, find it in the store, right? And then for a while, we sort of passed around telling everyone, hey, in your readme, make sure you put you know, where the source code lives, right? Now we can say... Well, right. so to be clear, this pulls back to when you added repo into your layers.yaml file, correct? Yes. I'm guessing yes. that's yes. where it's pulled that's, from. I, I so wanted you to does, loop does, around to that again. Yeah, standardizing that it, as a charm author, if you put that address in, then that enables other people to do this pull source command, which they could not otherwise do to help bug fixing and stuff. And so, Right, and there's a couple of things. Uh, we, we try to be as smart as possible about it. Um, the, the charm pull source command as a first pass is here, but we're looking at ways that we can make it so that having an explicit repo key wouldn't necessarily be, be required where we could derive that on, at a build time of the charm. But for now, the repo key is a way to get around it. We get the feature in it. We can iterate on it for um, 16.10. Um, in addition to charms, it also is just a great way to pull down sources for layers and interfaces. If you don't want to spend the three seconds going to the interface website... Um, and then clicking on the repo key, and then cloning or, or forking or downloading, depending on where you are. This one's in GitHub. A few of them are not. Uh, for instance, the app layer is actually in that wrong key. I feel, Marco, now that you're bringing this up, Launchpad? we should, we should yeah. definitely make this a should in policy. Don't you agree? Um, not a must. I'm saying it. It's just yeah, a no, it's, it's convenient when you could pull source and get what you want, man. So it definitely should be a should. So... This pull source basically gives you that ability. The same thing. Uh, you pull layers. This is a Git layer uh, on GitHub. Uh, the app layer is in Bazaar or is in Launchpad. I don't know where it 
is a bizarre git. Um, so these will just get pulled down into my temp directory, which is a terrible place to put these. Uh, but these are the git repos. So you can start hacking on them, um, doing whatever you need to, and that source control tool to propose, propose those patches back upstream um, and poke around at them from the command line as well. Um, that's the majority that I had from the charm command. Uh, there are a couple other commands that I couldn't quite go over. I think in the subsequent um, office hours we'll go over a couple more things like resources and terms. Uh, but I want to get the original, the initial stuff out and let everyone know this is available now for testing. Uh, it is pretty freaking stable. I haven't had any problems. I've been running this for a couple weeks now uh, in guilty silence. Uh, so. Um, everyone, in, everyone who's watching this, I'll send out a subsequent mail for call for testing. Uh, it's in the Devel PPA. Uh, this is what we'll be putting in Zenial, so anyone who can help us find any issues now before we go for that final push into the archive would be much appreciative. Yep. And it goes right along. If you already are following the 2.beta using the dev the Devel PPA, yeah. you've got access to this charm command. We'll just um, get it, I, would, yeah. I would encourage you to go ahead and try it and use it. Um, the one thing we'll say is, is once you you push a charm up with this tool, um, the charm store will stop ingesting it from Launchpad. So you can take over an existing charm that's already there that you're managing.